Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Donna Michi and Ann Baxter in It Happened Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Since our remote ancestors lived in caves and fought their wars with clubs, men have wanted to know the true story of the future. Some wanted this knowledge only to grow rich, others to grow famous, and perhaps a few to help their fellow men. But since the beginning of time, all of our yesterdays lead only toward tomorrow. And this week, our play is René Clair's delightful and exciting picture, It Happened Tomorrow. Arnold Pressburger produced the picture, and Donna Michi and Ann Baxter starred in it for us tonight. It Happened Tomorrow is the drama of one man who begs for a chance to see tomorrow's newspaper today and gets that chance. Many strange and wonderful adventures come to him, and the greatest of them all is meeting a very beautiful girl. But after you hear this story, I wonder if you'll ever again want to see tomorrow's newspaper today. In crossing the country last week, I met still more of our audience face to face. And when that happens, I, I always discover again how strong the loyalty is that holds you to this theater and to the product behind it, Lux Flakes. I remember one person in particular. She... <laughs> She told me right away that she was a grandmother. And then I learned how she was doing her bit for the war. She had made it possible for her daughter to take a job in a war plant by looking after the daughter's baby and the, uh, the rather expensive laundry that always goes with the young of the human species. Grandmother made just one proviso. For the sake of her hands, the daughter was to provide Lux Flakes. Consequently, I, I feel sure that that baby is still in very lovely hands. And now for the last time this season, the curtain goes up on the opening of our play. Act one of It Happened Tomorrow, starring Donna Michi as Larry and Ann Baxter as Sylvia. <laughs> It's an event that has never happened before and will never happen again. The Stevens Golden Wedding Anniversary. Children, grandchildren, even great-grandchildren have flung to the Stevens home for the happy occasion. Yes, every member of the family is present. Everyone except the two people responsible. They are still upstairs observing 50 years of wedded bliss arguing over a manuscript. But you can't do it. I simply forbid it. For 50 years, you've kept me from publishing this. Thank goodness I have. But why? Why? Because it happens that I love you. Oh. Well. And I won't have you laughed at. But at least let me read it to my family. They'll never believe it unless they hear it from me. I was in on most of it, and I still don't believe it. Well, you, you just don't believe in miracles. Nobody believes in miracles anymore. I do. And so do I, my dear. Oh, Sylvia, you're wonderful. I'm wonderful, too. Hmm? You must be. You put up with me for a long, long time. Oh, darling, how can I ever thank you? Well, one way would be by forgetting all about that story and coming downstairs with me now. Yes, yes. Here, you can put it away. That's better. I just wanted to read it to them, and then they could judge what happened for themselves. But if they didn't believe it, Larry, if they said that you were an old man and, and foolish... Yes, I, I am an old man, but I was young then, wasn't I? When it all started to happen, 1896. I guess I've been a reporter on the evening news for almost a year. And I never even knew you existed. But you did that night, didn't you? Thanks to William Jennings Bryan running for president. Andy and I had gone back to the office to write up a speech. Just the two of us were there. An old pop bench. Oh, Files, boys. Yeah, thanks, Pop. Didn't mean to leave them so messed up. That's all right. Just find yourself another seat. Right. Larry, you're sitting on one of my file albums, right in the middle of 1862. Oh, sorry, Pop, sorry. I've been keeping these files just so for 42 years, and you sit on them. What's the difference, Pop? 
There's nothing deader than yesterday's news. You don't have imagination, Andy. News is what happens, whether it happened 50 years ago or, or tomorrow. You mean will happen tomorrow? Tomorrow's just an illusion. Look, see this album? Yeah, sure. It's the file for, what's that, March 1875. That's right. And this file here, that's for this year, 1896. Well, supposing we're all living in 1875 and I should walk in with the 1896 file. I could tell you everything that would happen, couldn't I? Just give me the one for next year, Pop, and you can name your own price. Every year's there, Andy, right on those shelves where I keep my file albums. We may not see them, but they're there, all right. The whole future's there. Ah, what if we could see into the future? Really see it? Yeah, just one day in the future. That's what I'd like, Pop. Tomorrow's newspaper. How much? No, no, Larry. Don't ask for a thing like that. Why, that ought to be a cinch for you, Pop. Come on, come on. Let's have it. I wish I could give it to you, Larry. Then you'd learn it's no good to know the future. Oh, if I knew where I could get tomorrow's newspaper, I'd give five years of my life for it. You would, huh? But how do you know you've got five years? <laughs> Go ahead and answer that one, Larry. <laughs> I guess you got me, Pop. <laughs> well, there's one thing I can guarantee will happen five minutes from now. What's that? You and I are going to be mighty thirsty. Come on, let's go. We can have a beer on Park Street. Yeah, how about it, Pop? No, thanks. Uh, got a few things to get in order here. Say, I passed that cafe on the way to work. Got some new entertainment there. Mind readers, the poster says, Lombardi and Sylvia. <laughs> Maybe they could tell you the future. Well, good night, Pop. A mighty pretty looking girl in that act. At least she was on the posters. Yeah, they always are, Pop, on the posters. But I can tell you right now, she's full, fat, and 40. Good night, boys. Good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you have just seen, I have just placed Sylvia in a trance. Only my voice, the voice of Lombardi, can reach her. I will require the presence of a member of the audience here on the stage. Will someone volunteer? Any member of the audience? Ah, that gentleman there. Well, you look, you can stay here all night if you want to, Larry. I'm going home. Look at her. Just look at her. I've been looking at her. She's beautiful and I'm tired. Good night. Good night, Sylvia. Oh, good night. And just remember, 8 o'clock in the morning. An angel. She's an angel. And if you're late, you'll be flapping your wings, too. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Now, if you will stand here, my friend, and please to tell us what is the number in the case of your watch? The number, please. Well, I... I don't know. Oh, you do not know. Good. Now, perhaps Sylvia can tell you the number. Observe, she is on the other side of the stage. Sylvia, can you hear me? I can hear you. The gentleman holds a watch, Sylvia. I want to know the number on the case. I will try. I will try. Two, seven, nine... Oh, I can't. I can't. Sylvia, I compel you. Oh, so weak. I feel so weak. Tell me the number. Two, seven, nine, three, five, four. Two, seven, nine, three, five, four. Open the case, my friend. And now, sir, please to verify Sylvia's statement. Two, seven, nine, three, five, four. Why, why it's amazing, incredible. <laughs> Ah, thank you very much. Now, does the audience have any questions? Any questions they would like Sylvia to answer? Quickly, please, quickly. Professor. Ah, the young man, you have a question. Well, it uh, concerns a young lady. Of course, naturally. And you wish to know, is she going to marry you? Is that it? <laughs> well, all I want to know is that she will have lunch with me tomorrow. Sylvia, the senor wishes to know, will the girl he loves have lunch with him tomorrow? Yes, he will. Well, thank you, but I, I'd like to know where. Ha! <laughs> that you will have to arrange with her. Well, that's what I'd like to do, but she can't hear me. She's in a trance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. Lombardi has put Sylvia's mind to sleep, and Lombardi is not certain when it will awaken. In the meantime, Sylvia is unable to accept any social engagement. Now, who else has a question, please? Oh, I'd like to know you tell me something. Please. One at a time, please. One at a time. You, signorina, you want to know where to look for the ring you lost. Sylvia, the signorina wishes to know. Good night, Sylvia. See you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, Cabby. North Elm Street, please. 140 Hello. North. Remember me? No, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, but we were speaking just a little while ago. You answered my question. Oh, a customer. Yeah, something like that. Then you must have seen that I was in a trance, asleep. Besides, you were much too forward. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, may I take you home? Cabby's waiting. So I noticed. Good night. Oh, uh, can I ride with you? Of course not.
Driver 140, North Elm Street. Yes, ma'am. But if you go off in the cab, what'll I do? I haven't the slightest idea, but if my uncle should find uncle? you here... Professor Lombardi. Oh, 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 oh. He'd very likely punch you in the nose. So go home. Yes, yes, I, I think you're right. All right, driver, and go slow. Hiya. Now, you listen to me. Who hired this cab? I did. Been waiting half an hour for you. Oh, I see. Then you can let me out right here. Oh, but why? You're perfectly safe. You just sit in that corner, and I'll stay way over here in this corner. Of course, if we should hit some bumps, that won't be my fault. Now, why did you have to slap my face? You forgot. I'm a mind reader. Oh, all right. I promise I won't even think of kissing you. You'd better not, and I'd much prefer the conversation ended right now. No, not until I know whether your prediction is right or not. What prediction? The senor wishes to know will the girl he loves have lunch with him tomorrow. Remember? I never remember anything I say in a dress. But your answer was that she will. Oh, that's fine. I hope you have a wonderful time. Oh, I'm sure we will. Uh, you know where the evening news office is? Certainly. I'll be waiting there for you. One o'clock tomorrow. What? And the name is Stevens. Lawrence Stevens. Uh, just ask for Larry. Driver, stop this cab at once. Yes, ma'am. I'm getting out. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. I'll get out. It's about time. Well, look, we're right in front of the office. See, the evening news. One o'clock tomorrow. If you don't eat lunch until you see me, you're going to starve to death. Are you sure you have the name? Larry Stevens. And good night. Good night. And thank you. Oh, me, me, me. Larry. Larry. Pop. Pop, is that you? Larry. Pop, where are you? Oh. Oh, I guess I couldn't see in the dark. I've been waiting for you, Larry. You've been waiting? You've been working all this time? Oh, no. Locked up the office some time ago. Oh, but it's late. What are you doing around here this time of night? I wanted to see you, Larry. I've got something for you. What's that? This, Larry. Here. <laughs> What's the paper? The evening news. That's right. But I read it. I read it when it came out this afternoon. Maybe not. Well, now, Pop, you've been getting yourself a snootful. No, I wouldn't do a thing like that. Good night, Larry. Wait, wait a minute. I'll take you home. No, no thanks, my boy. We go different ways. Put the paper in your coat pocket, Larry. That's it. Don't lose it. Huh? Papa, I, I don't want to... In I'm your a... pocket, Larry. Good night. Good night, Pop. see the breakfast menu? No, just the usual, Lily. Hello, Larry. Well, Joe, how are you? Come on, come on, sit down. Thanks. Just dropped in for a cup of coffee. Sure is cold out. Yeah, great weather for me. How goes it, Joe? Oh, not so good. Still looking for a job. Yeah. Say, do you mind if I look at the want ads in your paper? Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got a paper. Sure you have. There, in your coat pocket. What do you... Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot. Here, it's last night's evening news. Oh, that won't matter. Just the want ads I'm after. Mm. Hey, this ain't last night's paper, Larry. It's today's. Why, well, can't be, Joe. News doesn't go to press until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's last night's. Yeah, but what day is today? It's Wednesday. But this says Wednesday. Well, now, Joe, it can't say Wednesday. It, it, Look! It... Wednesday. Hey, Lil, what day is today? Wednesday. And look what it says here, Larry. Snow. It didn't snow yesterday, did it? Of course not. Let me see that. There. Right next to this article about the Opera House holdup. Huh. Bandits steal cash at Opera House while Paderewski plays. See? But... It says, unseasonable snowfall. A flurry of snow descended on the city at 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah, it's Wednesday. All day. What a day. Snow in May. Huh? Well, look outside there. It's snowing. Yeah, it's snowing. 8 o'clock in the morning. And it is 8 o'clock. Exactly 8 o'clock. Say, here's an ad looks pretty good, Larry. They need a waiter at the Excelsior Restaurant. Excel... Why, that's this place. This here's the Excelsior Restaurant. What are you talking about? We don't need any waiter. But it says so in the paper. Help wanted. Waiter, Excelsior Restaurant. Well, I can't help what it says. It's a mistake. We don't need any. Then why waste people's time putting ads in the... Uh, you crazy, you fool! Uh, you get out of here! That's the last of time you'll break any of my dishes. Now uh, get out. Ah, oh, Mike, have a heart. I have a heart, but I have no more dishes. You... You're fired! Lily! Lily! Uh, yes, Mike? Uh, take us some money and go down to the newspaper. Put in, we want a waiter right away. Now, what do you look so crazy for? It, in the morning paper? No, no, right away. Put in the evening news. Hello, Larry. Hello, Mike. Well, what's the matter? You sick of two? You and Lily. What for are you looking so funny at me, huh? Why, 
Uh, it's nothing, Mike. It's nothing. Give me that paper, Joe. I got to get the office. I'm late. Maybe I'm a whole day late. Goodbye, Joe. Good luck. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Now, what's the matter with you fellas? Hasn't anybody seen Pop Tell you Larry oh, hasn't Larry, shown up. But yet. I gotta find him. Oh, now look, fellas, if, if this is some kind now of a cut joke. Cut it out, I'll... Larry, will you cut it out? There isn't anybody seen Pop Benson. Besides, what's so important? Well, uh, it, it's personal. He gave me something last night, and I gotta speak to him. About I've it. got something personal to talk about, too. Get in here, Stevens. Oh, yes, Mr. Well, Stevens. if I see Pop, Larry, I'll tell him. Yeah, it's awful important, Andy. It's awful important. Stevens, you're late. Yeah, I know, Mr. Gordon, but I've been looking for Pop Benson. Something's happened. I, I don't understand you how. You don't, but... huh? Well, maybe you can understand this. If you're ever late for work again, you can look for another job. Yes, Mr. Gordon. Uh, look, who's covering the Paderewski concert this afternoon at the Opera House? Oh, don't tell me you want to be a music critic. But suppose something should happen there, the biggest news of the day. You think I'd send you? Stevens, you're either drunk or crazy. Maybe both. I am, huh? Well, Pop Benson gave me something last night, and if you wait a minute, I'll bring it in and show it to you. You'll change your mind fast enough. I will, eh? You're fine. I quit. I mean, I'll quit tonight if you if you haven't given me a raise. A raise? Why, Yes, you... a raise for being on the job when something sensational happens. You can set up a headline right now. Bandits steal cash at Opera House while Paderewski plays. Say that again? Well, what I mean is suppose that something like that did happen. That'd be a good headline, wouldn't it? Bandits steal cash at Opera House while Paderewski plays. And right under it, my byline. I saw it. I mean, I mean, I can see it now by Larry Stevens. Get out of here. Yes, sir, I'm going. You haven't a thing to worry about, Mr. Gordon. I'll be at the Opera House right on the job. <laughs> In a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Don Amici and Ann Baxter in Act Two of It Happened Tomorrow. Oh, hello, Sally. What's on your mind? Lux flakes, of course. And all the things you can lux around the house. I've made an alphabetical list of some of them. Want to hear it? Okay. What have you got for A? Antimacassars. Huh? You know, those little doilies you put on chair backs? They need luxing frequently. Oh, yes. A and B? Bedspreads and blankets. And curtains for C. Well, what about D? Draperies and dishes, of course. Lux is so kind to your hands. E and F. Enamelware and floors. Lux is especially grand for tiled ones. And G is for glassware and the globes around lights. Wash them often to keep them sparkling. What about H? Hairbrushes. Soak them in Lux suds while you're washing your hair. I and J. Ice boxes and jars. Always wash jars and Lux before you start canning. And now K. Keys, the kind on pianos. Lux takes finger marks off in a jiffy. L? Linen, linoleum, lampshades, oh, lots of things. M? Mirrors and mantelpieces. Then napkins for N. O? Is for oilcloth to keep it bright. And P is for picture frames, pillow covers, and porcelain. Uh, I'll bet you had a hard time with Q. No. Nope. <laughs> Quilt. Right. RST? Rugs, the cotton chenille bathroom kind. Slip covers and scarves for S. And tea for towels and tablecloths. Especially those gay printed ones. You. Upholstery. Lots of upholstery fabrics are luxable. V and W. Vases, Venetian blinds, woodwork and windows. And finally, X, Y, and Z. I'm stumped there, Mr. Kennedy. All I could think of is, for extra long wear, why not give nice things this easy lux care? Oh, <laughs> Sally. But you're right. It's smart and safe to use gentle lux all around the house. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of It Happened Tomorrow, starring Don Amici as Larry and Ann Baxter as Sylvia. Larry Stevens' wish to have a copy of tomorrow's newspaper has come true. And on page one is Larry's own byline over the day's biggest news story. The fact that the news event has not yet occurred doesn't bother Larry at all. He's been passing the time writing out an exact copy of what he has just read, so he'll have the facts all ready to hand in when the opera house is held up. Old Pop Benson is still mysteriously absent from the office, but at one o'clock, someone else walks in and asks for Larry Stevens. I'm, uh, I'm looking for Mr. Stevens, please. How does he do it? Larry! Larry, she's here! Who's here? The angel! Sylvia, I knew it. I knew you'd come. Aren't you terribly sure of yourself, Mr. Stevens? Oh, no, please. I, I didn't mean it that way. I, I knew you'd be here because everything that isn't possible has been happening. It's a day of miracles. Well, I just happened to be passing by, and I wanted to tell you that I can't have lunch with you. Oh, oh I see. We haven't known each other long enough, huh? 
You're a very understanding person. Yeah, but there's something I have to tell you. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. It is? Look, after we have lunch, we'll go to the opera house to hear Pederewski. You're changing the subject. Oh, no. No, no, I'm not. That's part of my secret. Something's going to happen at the opera house. Look, uh, we're going to eat. We don't, we don't have much time. But I can't go with you, Mr. Stevens. Really, I simply can't. <laughs> Oh, dear, we're late. Oh, no, no. It doesn't happen until ten minutes after two. We're, we're two minutes early. What doesn't happen? You haven't made a bit of sense yet. I was going to tell you, but you wouldn't believe it. You've got to see it happen. Then you'll know I'm not crazy. This way, please. Your ticket, sir? We're right in the last row, near the door. Yes, sir. Larry, do we have to sit so far back? No, it, it's all right. We'll be leaving soon. I don't want to leave soon. But the main attraction will be over. Oh, no, no. Something's going to happen outside the door in the lobby. Quiet. What's Quiet. going to happen? A hold-up. A hold-up? Yeah. Three bandits are coming in. Larry, that's the... And they'll pretend to ask for tickets, and one of the bandits will draw a gun. Quiet. I want to listen. So do I. What time is it? Exactly ten minutes after two. Good. Listen. Keep your seats, ladies and gentlemen. There's just been a hold-up. Keep your seats, please. <laughs> But Larry, why did you bring me back here with you? Because Mr. Gordon finishes reading my story, I think I'll need a witness. But, but how did you know? Stevens, what kind of a cock and bull story is this? When did this alleged hold-up take place? Ten minutes ago. And you returned here from the opera house and wrote this all in ten minutes? Boss, please, just send that story through now. Sure, I'll send it through, right straight through to the wastebasket. Sylvia, tell him what you saw. Well, I, I really didn't see anything. Of course not. Well, what I mean is, we were listening to Paderewski play, and before I knew it, it was all over. What was all over? The things that Mr. Stevens wrote about. And, and it's going to be printed. You'll see it all on page one. And I'll see Good. you in... Oh, Inspector, well, come on in. What's doing? Plenty. There's been a hold up at the opera house. A hold up? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Andy! Andy! Yes, Stop the passes. Come here, quick, come here. Oh, Miss Gordon, what's happened? Oh, wait till I get this story out of the wastebasket. Set it up for page one, four column spread. Yeah, what about the headline? Uh, headline? Yes, headline. How about bandit steal cash at opera house while Paderewski plays? That's it. By Lawrence Stevens. What? Oh, well, all right, by Lawrence Stevens. Oh, great work, Larry. Thanks. And thank you, Inspector. You arrived just in the nick of time. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. You and me are going to have a little talk, Stevens. Now? Now. Johnson, come in. Larry, isn't that the usher from the opera house? Well, yes, but what? Oh. Oh. This the man you follow there, Johnson? It certainly is. It most certainly is. Well, now, just a minute. Shut please. up. What were you doing at the opera house throwing a hold up? Why, uh, I, I took this young lady to hear Paderewski. Don't be modest, Larry. Tell him the truth. Like you told me this morning. He knew just what was going to happen. Now, boss, please. Wait. I... Of course he knew. I told him about the hold-up. Oh, Sylvia. And how did you know? Because it's my business to know the future. We're mind readers, my uncle and I. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. Park to play, isn't it? Yes. Lombardi and Sylvia. Sometimes I can see things that are going to happen. Things like this hold-up. And can you see what's going to happen right now? Uh, no. I'm afraid I can't. Then let me tell you, sister. Him and you and me, we're heading for police headquarters. <laughs> Now, for the last time, Stevens, who were those three guys who held up the opera house? I've told you a hundred times, I don't know. And where's Sylvia? What are you doing to her? Nothing. I tend to loosen an argue. Oh. And where's Pop Benson? Why hasn't anybody been able to find him? I'm asking the questions here. Here. How did you know this holdup was going to happen? All right, I'll tell you. You won't believe me, but I read about the holdup in a newspaper this morning. What newspaper? Tonight's evening news. You're too... Make a sap out of me, will you? Okay. Stay here, then, and think up some more jokes. O'Neill! Yes, sir? Look in on him once in a while. When he's ready to tell the truth, bring it to me. Yes, and now, sir, please to verify Sylvia's statement. What is the number on your watch case? Five, three, two, four, one. She's right. I never heard of such a thing. Thank you very much. Now, does anyone in the audience have any questions? Any questions, please? Yeah, yeah. You make predictions. Past, present, and future. Could you have predicted what happened a day the opera house hold him? Why, sure, Lombardi and Sylvia. We predict those things all the time. Then suppose you predict me something right now. Now? Yeah. Something that will happen tonight. Well, senor, Sylvia is far-sighted. 
Things that are so close are sometimes out of the focus. Then how did you two predict today's holdup? <laughs> I am so sorry. The next act is waiting. Perhaps you'll come again another time. You... I'm not fussy. Predict anything. A crime, a fire, a murder. Whatever okay. you want. Say I try. Sylvia, do you see something that is going to happen tonight? I can't hear you. You see, she can't even hear me. Then speak louder. Sylvia, try. Try good and hard. What do you see? Nothing. That's right, Sylvia. How can anybody see anything? There's no moon tonight. Why don't you admit it? Your face, your face, both of you. Please, Professor. Yes, Sylvia? I can see now. It is night. This night. I see a river, a bridge. A girl stops at the bridge. Yes, then what? She jumps. She's in the water. She goes under. Under. I don't see her anymore. Oh. Here's a sandwich for you, son. You ready to talk yet? I tell you, I don't know anything. Uh, okay, when you change your mind, holler. Tell me the truth. Did I meet you late last night or did I dream it? And tell me, did you give me a newspaper? It didn't do you any good, did it, Larry? Pop, I'm in an awful jam. Nobody believes me. Say, you ought to be on your way to the river by now. You're supposed to be there a little after midnight. In fact, you've got to be. Well, who says so? Why, I just read it in this newspaper. What newspaper? Not tomorrow's evening news again. Isn't that what you want? No. Yes. Yes. Does it say anything about the bandits? Yes, right here. It says they've been caught. It does. Uh, where? When? Tomorrow morning, the Union Bank. The police were waiting for them. You wrote all about it. I did? Oh, you'll be a hero. What, for, for telling the police? Oh, no, for something else. Listen, I'll read it to you. Unknown girl makes suicide jump. Leaps to death from Ninth Street Bridge. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter... Makes heroic attempt at rescue. Girl's body not recovered. Well, I don't believe that. Says so right here, Larry. Yeah, but, but I'm in jail. And even if I got out of jail, I wouldn't go risking my life jumping in the river for a girl I know I can't save. What kind of a monkey do you think I am? Don't ask me, boy. I'm no prophet. I'm just reading what it says. Hey, who are you talking to? What's the matter with you? Well, he's gone. Pop, Pop's gone. Huh? But he was standing right there outside... Wait a second. Look, if you let me out, I'll tell you where you can get those guys who pull the hole up. Well, now, we're getting somewhere. Union Bank, tomorrow morning. All you have to do is wait for them. Union Bank, huh? Come on, Stevens. You and me is going to find the inspector. Why isn't he here? Oh, he's at the Park Cafe with the mind readers. Uh, Professor uh, Lombardi and Sylvia. All right, Stevens, all right. So we'll be at the bank. But if you're lying, remember, we know where to pick you up. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, uh, where's Sylvia, Professor? Going home. I think she's going home. One thing more. Just when did she first tell you about the holdup going to happen at the opera house? What? Why, well, she never mentioned that. Hold what? up. How could Sylvia know such crazy business? What this is? A few minutes ago when you did your act up there in the stage, I asked could you make predictions and you said sure. How could we know then that you was cops? You mean the prediction was a fake? Fake? I don't like that word. Look, and all that stuff she gave me about a bridge, a girl jumping into the river, that was plain hooey. Sylvia said that? Yeah. Sure it was hooey. But, uh, but a bridge? A river? Shut your mouth. She was just trying to get us all out of a tight squeeze. You too. The body. Did she say the body would never be found? No. She didn't know. Oh, that poor girl, she didn't know. Now where's he going? You're the mind reader. You tell me. She jumped in. I saw her. I saw her. Officer! Officer! Oh, hurry. Come, everybody. I'll get her. Oh, she'll drown. You're too late. She'll drown. Now, wait till I get these oh, shoes off. <laughs> Can you see her, anybody? No, she's disappeared. Somebody find a rowboat. I'll save her. No. No, I know you won't save her. Oh, you do, huh? Who are you? Larry Stevens, Evening News. Sorry, I have to cut this conversation short. Sylvia. 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 Oh, Be careful. That's the dock. Yeah, so I found out. Where are you? Over here. 
Father Piley. Are you all right? Yes. But what are you doing here? You spoiled everything. Oh, Sylvia, darling, I, I knew you were in danger. But I wasn't. I was just trying to save you. I had to make a prediction, and then I had to make it really happen. Oh, you wonderful, foolish darling. Yeah, hey, that looks like a hat floating over there. Shh, they're looking for me. Yeah, yeah, they've got a rowboat. Hey, what happened to that reporter fella? Don't move. That's a hat, all right. The girl must have sunk like a stone. Yeah, it's another of them cases. Body not recovered. Did you hear that? That's what I want you to think. Body not recovered. And Pop's newspaper was right. I don't know what you're talking about. But it won't be right if they find me here. Now, shush. Oh, don't worry. They won't find you. The paper said so. Come on. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm supposed to be at the bank first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> Have they found Stephen's body yet, Andy? No, no, the girls either. They're still dragging the river. If they haven't found him yet, I guess they never will. Uh, what a swell fella. Jumping in the river to save some girl who didn't want to live anyway. He'd have made a fine reporter. Yeah. Fine reporter. Hey, what's all the excitement? Mr. Gordon, look. Look, it's Larry. Huh? Late for work again, Larry, I see. Larry, you're not drowned. It was the cops that told us. Hello, Andy. Was... How are you? Mr. Oh, Gordon, fine. look. i got a great story. Do I have a job? Sure, you've got a job. And the raise? Yes, but what's the story? The police just trapped those opera house bandits. Where? Right where I was, the Union Bank. Sit down. Write it. Give them room, boys, and kill his obituary. Obituary? Sure, you were drowned last night, remember? Oh, yeah. I tried to find the cops after I got out of the river. Start writing, just... Larry, and change those headlines, Sweeney. Okay. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, makes heroic attempt at rescue and river. Now get on that bank story, Larry. We've got to make the first edition. Come on, let's go, Larry. Will you? It's late. Everybody's left. Oh, I just thought if I hung around the office here, maybe Pop would show up. Better not wait for me, Andy. Okay. Uh, but first, you've got to tell me something. What's that? How come you were at the Union Bank this morning? Oh, just passing by. Uh-huh. And how did you happen to be on the Ninth Street Bridge last night just when that woman jumped in? Well, same reason, just passing by. Hmm. And you were just passing by the Opera House yesterday afternoon, too, huh? Well, I, I guess I just have a nose for news. Oh, come on, pal, come on. How'd you do it? You really want to know? Do I? All right, I'll tell you the truth. Do you believe in miracles? No. But that's what it must have been. Andy, anything I want to know, I can find out. Oh, you can, huh? Then how come you had to, has, uh, had to go to the boys for a hundred dollar advance? Well, because one of these days, Sylvia and I are going to be married, and soon, too. I see. And just anything you want to know, you can find out. But you have to borrow a hundred dollars to get married. Well, what's wrong with that? Look, if what you said is true, you can have a fortune. A fortune? Sure, by picking the winners at the racetrack tomorrow. Let's see you do that, miracle man. Gee, I, I, I hadn't thought of that. Gosh, Andy, thanks. That's a great idea. Yeah, and I got a better one. Turn out the lights and go on home. Yeah, I will, uh... A little later on. So long, Larry. So long, so long, Andy. Larry. Larry. Puff. Can't you stay here long, Larry? Can't you stay here long? You want something, boy? Pop, I'm all mixed up in something I don't understand, but I'm not going to ask any questions. All I want is one more paper, Pop, please, and I'll never ask you again. I've got a paper here, Larry, but I don't think you should have it. Oh, it can make me rich. It can give me everything I want. Since when can money do that? Well, I've got everything else. I'm in love. Sylvia's going to marry me. Give it to me, Pop. Larry, you shouldn't have grabbed that paper from me. I'm sorry, Pop. Remember, you took it from me. I didn't give it to you. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the races. I want to know what horses to bet on. Larry, look on the front page. The front page, it's a late extra. Why, what's on the front page? Right there, you see? Larry Stevens shot to death at St. George Hotel. Pop. That's why I didn't want you to have it, Larry. At 6.25 tonight, Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, was shot to death in the lobby of the St. George Hotel. What, Pop? Goodbye, Larry. Pop, come back. Pop. Pop. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 
After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Don Amici and Ann Baxter for Act Three of It Happened Tomorrow. Now, here's Sue, just starting to lux a dress when... Wouldn't you know, the minute my hands are wet. All right, all right, I'm coming. Hello? Oh, hi, Mary. <laughs> no, I was right here, but I just started to wash a dress and my hands were all wet. Oh, that's all right. Thursday night? Why, yes, I think so. What time? Okay, I'll tell Bill. Who? No, she did. Well, <laughs> look, can I call you back and hear the rest of that later? My ears are simply flapping, but I don't want that dress to soak. It's that white rayon one with the big red roses on it. Oh, sure, I've washed it lots of times already. <laughs> Thanks, pal, but it's not new. No, I wore it all last summer. Well, Bill says it's still so bright you can see me a block away. Yep, I was kind of scared the first time I washed it, but I tested the material and... Oh, simple. You just squeeze the belt or something in a glass of lukewarm water for a couple of minutes, and if you can't see any color in the water, why, then it's safe to lux the whole thing. Uh-huh, lux. Oh, yes, I swear by it for colors, especially prints. I wouldn't dare use hot water or strong soap on this dress. <laughs> why, the roses would probably ramble right off in two seconds if I did. Well, look, chum, I gotta go. I'll call you back later. Bye now. See you Thursday. Bye-bye. Now, if Sue had only said that Lux keeps colors new-looking up to three times longer, I wouldn't have to add anything. But maybe she hasn't heard about those actual washing tests we made. How the fabrics that were washed according to harsh wash day methods looked faded and washed out, while the ones that were luxed stayed bright and lovely. It all goes to prove colors lead a long life when they lead a Lux life. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. A chat with our stars is the order of the evening after the play. But here's the curtain for the third act of It Happened Tomorrow, starring Donna Michi and Ann Baxter. It's later the same night. Larry has read and reread two items in tomorrow's evening news until he knows them by heart. On the sports page, the race results reveal that by tomorrow night, he'll be a rich man. But on the front page is the slightly more disquieting fact that at 6.25, he'll also be a dead man. Now a glassy-eyed, nervous wreck, he rushes to Sylvia's boarding house. Mary! Sylvia, darling, I love you. And something wonderful has happened. I, I mean, something awful. I mean, I mean, it's going to happen, and I don't have much time. No, and, and it's I... you. Hello, Uncle. Hello. Sylvia, say you'll marry me tomorrow, please. Well, of course I will, darling, but why so soon? Well, it, it's just that, well, a man should provide for his widow, uh, his wife. And there's so many things to do. Get a license, get married, go to the racetrack, be at the St. George Hotel, and, oh. Larry, aren't you feeling well? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just fine. But you're shivering. Are you cold? Not as cold as I'll be tomorrow night. Hey, uh, you got any money? You think you can support a wife? Oh, sure, sure. How much in the bank? In the bank? Well, uh, nothing, but I got $100 right here, see? Besides, by tomorrow night, I'll be rich. What difference does it make how much money he has? We'll get along fine, darling. Oh, sure we will. Uncle, have you ever predicted five winners at the racetrack? So, a gambler. Oh, no, no, a gambler can lose. I can't. You see this list? These are the five horses that are going to win tomorrow afternoon. They are, huh? Of course. Darling, what's the matter? Aren't you happy? Are you sure you want to get married? Sylvia, let's get married right now. Tonight. Then I've got to get away. Get away? Where? Oh, anywhere. As long as it's far away from the St. George Hotel. But I thought you said you had to be there tomorrow night. Was it business, Larry? Business? Well, uh, kind of. But maybe they can do without me. I, I don't think they can, but if I'm not there, they'll have to. Well, then we'll get married. Tonight. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. There's only one thing. What's that? Where's the minister? Oh, you <laughs> darling. And I now pronounce you man and wife. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. We're terribly sorry to have had to wake you up. Fate has no regard for the clock, my dear. Oh, how right you are, sir. How right. Mr. Stevens, it does my heart good to see you so serious. Marriage is a serious business. It's meant to last a lifetime. It is, huh? Now, if there's nothing else I can do... Yeah, but there is. J just one more thing. You can draw up my will. Larry! But it's a very sensible step to take, Mrs. Stevens. Well, of course it is. 
I want everything left to my widow. If you just wait here, I'll be right back with the four. Professor. What? About the races. Races? People don't go to races on their honeymoon. I know. That's why you'll have to go instead. You think I'm crazy, too? I won't go. Oh, you have to go. Don't, don't you want Sylvia to be rich? It's her last chance. But, Larry, darling, there'll be other times, lots of other times. Professor, Uncle, please. You can throw away your hundred dollars yourself, not me. All right, I'll go. But as soon as we get back... Yes? I'll have to get myself locked up tight so I can't possibly get out. If you ask me, that should have been done years ago. <laughs> Sylvia, here they are, the bookmakers. Sylvia, haven't you any influence on him? A hundred dollars to his name, and he's going to bet it all on the first race. Oh, Larry, do you have to? The whole hundred dollars? Darling, it's not a bet. This is a sure thing. Uh, can I place a bet with you? A pleasure, Jack. How much on who? A hundred dollars, Lamplighter to win. Get out of here. Can't you see the board? Lamplighter won five minutes ago. They told me the first race was at 2.30. So we lost a few thousand dollars. Anyway, did I know the winner or didn't I? How about picking a winner in the second race, Jack? That's a cinch. Mudlark. My odds are 20 to 1. 20 to 1, okay. $100 on Mudlark. Come on, Larry, let's go to the grandstand. Gee, I'm excited. Well, there's really no point watching the race, darling. Mudlark can't lose. Oh, sure as death and taxes, huh? Now, why did you have to say that? <laughs> $1,950, 2000 There you are, Jack, 2000 bucks. Oh, Larry, $2,000. If I had your luck, my friend, I'd ride it. That's just what I'm going to do. Lightning in the third. Spoken like a sport. 2000 to win. All right, step right up. Who's next? Highest strike on. Who's next? Oh, Larry, again? You think you should? I've never seen so much money in my life. Oh, you're going to see a lot more, honey. All right, Bucky, the whole lot of Ramona, four to one. Three to one, that's the best I can do. Okay, three to one on Ramona. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. He won three races already. Larry must be right. So Ramona won, and he's got all that Oh, Larry, be satisfied. But all we've got is $30,000. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Everything's happening just the way you said it would. Yeah, everything. Bucky. Yeah. 30000 on Black Flash, on the nose. Black Flash. Even money. Okay, Jack, but I never heard of anybody picking four winners in a row. Well, this is a sure thing. I saw it in tomorrow's newspaper. Okay, Jack, it's your funeral. Yeah, I know. I know. Big tips. Get away from me. Black Flash lost. He lost. What are you so happy about? We're always going to be happy. What if he did lose? Yeah, but you don't understand. If the sport page is wrong, the front page can be wrong, too, and I'm not going to be shot. Larry, what do you mean? You're not going to be... Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have the following announcement to make. Larry, Larry, what you just said about... Quiet, quiet. Diablo, number seven has just been disqualified. The winner of the race, Black Flash. Get out of here, Stevens. I'm warning you. But I tell you, I was robbed, Inspector. My wallet, $60,000. You? $60,000? What kind of a sucker do you think I am? But it's the truth. This guy in the check suit, just as we were leaving the racetrack... You back... also told me you had four straight winners. He did. $60,000. Then this man grabbed his wad out of his hand. And how come you were arrested for speeding? He told you how come, because we spotted this guy and our cabbie chased him all the way into town. Yeah, and he got away, huh? Certainly he got away. You allow the thief to get away and you arrest the victim. Okay, okay, then you ain't arrested anymore. Come on, beat it, all three of you. You're driving me nuts. Wait a minute. What time is it? Ten minutes to six. Now get out of here. No, I demand my rights. I was legally arrested. Now lock me up and don't let me out of this jail until tomorrow. Oh, Larry, it's our honeymoon. Ten minutes to six, Inspector, please. Lock me up for just one hour. Just one if hour. If I lock you up, it'll be in the bug house. Maroney, Schultz, yes, call the riot squad. Get these people out of my police station. <laughs> Stevens. 
Steve and Smear in Thunderation have you been? Look at that clock. I don't have to. I know what time it is. It's after six. A fine time to come to work. How long do you expect to hold down your job? Not very much longer. Mr. Gordon, I got married this morning. My widow and her uncle are waiting for me downstairs. You what? I wouldn't have come here at all except... Oh, fine. Except I got to find Pop Benson. Pop Benson? You haven't heard? Heard what? Why, Pop's dead. He's dead? Yes, we found out just this afternoon. Old age, I guess. Oh, Mr. Go... When? When? Why, three nights ago. Three nights ago? Sure. The night of the William Jennings Bryan speech. That same night? You're sure? Why, of course I'm sure. Oh, don't take it so hard. When they found the old man, they said he had a smile on his face. A smile on his face, yeah. huh? Stevens, you've done some mighty good work recently, but I simply cannot tolerate the way you've been acting. I'm afraid all this has gone to your head. But I'm giving you one more chance. Wife or no wife, I've got an assignment for you tonight, right away. Yeah, I know. At the St. George Hotel. It certainly is not the St. George Hotel. It's the other side of town. You... You mean you're not sending me to the St. George Hotel? Didn't you hear what I just said? Mr. Gordon, aren't you making a mistake? Are you insane? It's at the McIntyre Foundation. Get a cab and get over there right away. All right, but I'm afraid I'm going to wind up at the St. George Hotel at 625 no matter where I go. St. George Hotel, huh? Stevens, forget that assignment. What? Go to the St. George Hotel. Well, what for? Oh, you know what for, my boy. If you said the St. George Hotel, you must have had a mighty good reason to say the St. George Hotel. No, no. Oh, I, you I, can't I... fool me. Now, hurry up. I don't want you to be late. Stick around, boys. We'll be getting out an extra tonight. I just know we will. Larry. Larry, Larry. Why, what's Right matter? downstairs, Sylvia. I was down there talking to her, and all of a sudden, she, yeah, she, yeah. She, she saw some guy down the street in a check suit, and then she and her uncle started yelling, stop people, and they ran off after him. Did they catch him? I don't know. She just yelled that I should get a hold of you. Oh, thanks a lot, Eddie. Uh, what, what direction were they going? Down toward the alley off of Parsley. If you run fast, you can catch up to uh, her. 60,000 bucks off front wing. <laughs> Sylvia, Professor, wait. Wait for me, wait. Larry, Larry, he, he went down this alley. He's the one, Larry. I saw his face. He ducked into that door. What door? That one. He ran into that building there. Call the police and, and then wait right here. Oh, Larry, be careful, darling. Please. He's got a gun, Larry. I saw it. Don't worry. I can't sh get shot tonight except in the St. George Hotel. There he goes. He's going after him, Sylvia. But what did he mean? He can't get shot except in the... Sylvia. But that's it. That's the back end of the... Hello? Hello? Who? Larry Stevens? Why, yes, I sent him to the St. George Hotel myself. What? He was on an assignment, of course. Dead? Why, well, the man's a hero. He knew something big was going to happen to St. George. He... Never mind, I'll be right over. Oh, what happened, Mr. Gordon? Is it Larry again? Yes, boys, it's Larry again. But for the last time, I'm afraid. Johnson, take down this headline. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter... Shot to death in the lobby of the St. George Hotel. Oh, I could so stop. Stop, stop, please, stop. I ah, know, it's all right, fella, it's all right. How'd you get that lump on your head, huh? Hmm? Oh. Oh, he started shooting and I I ducked into the freight elevator, except the freight elevator wasn't there. Uh, you okay? Yeah, I, I, I guess so, I guess. But catch him. He'll, he'll get away. He's got, he's got a check suit. $60,000. Check suit, huh? Yeah. Now, don't worry, fella. Now, you was knocked out a lot's been happening. He's caught. And better than a fish, too. Dead? Sure. House detective tried to stop him. They shot it out in the lobby. House detective? Where, hmm? where, where are we? Where? We're at the St. George Hotel. The St. Saint... Oh, oh, this this fellow who, who was killed, uh, do they know who he was? Sure, from the wallet in his pocket. Newspaper reporter, uh, Larry Stevens. Le oh. Uh, hey, 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 Sarge, come here. He passed out again. You better get him inside. I think the inspector would like to see this bird. This is awful, Stevens, awful. I rushed over to this hotel because you're supposed to be dead. Yeah, yeah, I know, Mr. Gordon. They say I am. What do you think? A fine reporter. Our extra with your death story will be on the streets in five minutes, and you haven't even got a slight fever. Steven. Hello, Inspector. Is this it? Is this yours? Yeah, of course it is. My wallet. 
The one I told you was stolen. And how did it get in the pocket of the man who was killed? I told you before, when I stopped at the police station, it was stolen. Stevens, I'm getting awful tired of you. Pop's newspaper makes sense. It all makes sense. Crazy as a bat. Uh, you know, you're a wonderful man, Inspector. I love you. I love everybody. Now, where's my wife? Where's Sylvia? Probably in that mob outside. Can I go now? Can you go? I give you just ten seconds to clear out of here. Thank you. Hey, hey, look, my money, it's gone. Where's my $60,000? What 60? Oh, Neil, if this nimblewit ain't out of here in ten seconds, arrest him for vagrancy. <laughs> Larry, oh, darling, darling. Oh, honey, it's, it's all right now. Everything's all right now. Come on. We'll get a handsome cab and go home. We can't take a handsome cab, darling. We haven't any money. Oh, oh, that's right. Gee, I'd sure like to know what happened to that $60,000. Who cares? It didn't seem real anyway. No. Came in like a dream and went out like a dream. Well, it's a fine wedding night. No money, no umbrella, no nothing. Hmm. Nothing but a wonderful future. Darling, if you don't mind, let's not think about the future. It's just when I'm close to you, Larry, like this. I feel I can really look way ahead, years and years. And what do you see? Are we happy? We'll always be happy. Just you and me? Oh, no. I want at least four sons. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> can we afford them? Of course we can. <laughs> and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I can almost see them. Fifty years from tonight. Our golden wedding anniversary. Yeah, our golden wedding anniversary. Mary, Mary. Pop. My, my. Married 50 years. Better get downstairs, boy. They're waiting for you. Your children and their children. And even their children. Yes. Thanks, Pop. Larry, did you say something, darling? Uh, no. May I have your arm, darling? We mustn't keep them waiting. And your story, Larry? Are you going to tell them about it? No. They wouldn't believe it. They... They wouldn't believe it. Before our stars return for a curtain call, Lippy Collins is going to answer a question a young war worker raised recently. It's a question of time, Miss Collins. I don't mind washing my slips every time I wear them, but it takes so long to iron them. And if I don't, they look rumpled. Why not try the new nylon slips? You know, the ones made from parachute cloth released by the government. You can lux nylon the flash. Dries in almost no time. Looks smooth without ironing. How about when I wear slack? Oh, knit undies are what you need. No bumps or bulges, and they keep heavy work clothes from chafing your skin. Well, I suppose I'll just have to be the tailored type till the war's over. <laughs> oh, no, indeed. Even practical undies come with lace, bagging, eyelet embroidery, or ruffles. You'd be surprised how trim, smart, and feminine-looking they are. And jersey nighties, which need no ironing either, come in yummy colors and pretty prints, too. Of course, use Lux Flakes for all undies. That's right, Libby. Actual washing tests showed the amazing difference Lux Care makes. Lux undies stayed lovely three times longer than those washed the wrong way. Strong soaps, too hot water, and rough handling faded color badly. In some cases, straps were frayed, too, and seams pulled out. So you see, a Lux life... Means a long life for undies. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The curtain has fallen on another season of the Lux Radio Theater. And the stars who made this such a happy occasion return to the spotlight now. Don Amici and Ann Baxter. Thank you, C.B. That's, uh fine reputation you're giving us, closing up the place for the summer as soon as we get through. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why you two are here, Don. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd be sure the audience would want us back in the fall. And you ever closed the theater before? Well, I haven't had much chance, Don. I was only on Broadway a short time before I came out here. Mm, an accomplished actress at 16. <laughs> I don't think so, Mr. DeMille. In my very first picture, John Barrymore gave me a lesson in acting. <laughs> you, you picked a good teacher. I guess I was waving my arms around too much in this particular scene. And Mr. Barrymore stood it as long as he could, and he stopped the camera and said, My dear, do you have to swim? <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you stopped swimming? Yes, except in the water. Well, isn't that the way most actors begin, Don? 
Somebody throws them in and they sink or swim? Well, that's the way I got my first job, C.B. I was standing in line in the theater to buy a ticket one morning when the manager came out and saw me there. And he says, hey, you, come on backstage. The leading man has been in an accident. You've got a job. That's amazing. And he didn't even know you. Oh, sure. He was an old friend of mine. Well, C.B., don't work too hard this summer. <laughs> I'll see you in the fall. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. We'll see you next season. On the eve of our Independence Day, we leave you for the summer. Before the lights go on again in this theater, great events may happen. The forces of right are arrayed against the forces of evil on the field of battle. And the fate of the world for a hundred years to come hangs in the balance. The news is good, but nowhere is the task completed. And until it is, all America must unite to that end. Our job is to provide wholesome relaxation. And whatever contribution the Lux Radio Theater can make in this direction will be given with every ounce of effort at our command when the curtain rises on the new season in September. About 450 plays have been presented here by the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. And literally thousands of parts in those dramas have been filled by the finest stars and supporting players in Hollywood. During this year, the Lux Radio Theater has won its share of awards for excellence. The latest of these is the George Foster Peabody Award for Outstanding Entertainment in Drama, one of the most distinguished honors to yet to come our way. But I think we would fail in our duty to you if we didn't look upon these honors as a challenge for the future. And so, until we meet again, our hearts, like yours, must be with the sons and daughters of America, wherever they may be, and our hopes, like yours, for their speedy return. And now, to all our friends everywhere, our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, join me in an invitation to be with us again on Monday, September 4th, when the Lux Radio Theater begins its fourth season. It's fall season. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Now the cheese and choice cuts of lamb are back on the ration list and beef points raised. Those 30 red points a month don't go very far, do they? But you can get extra points by turning in your used kitchen fat. Yes, your butcher will give you two red tokens plus four cents for every pound of used fat. Our all-out offensive in Europe means your used kitchen fats are needed more urgently than ever. Needed in the making of ammunition, medicine, synthetic rubber, hundreds of things our fighting men use every day. So let's do an all-out job of backing our men. Save more used fat than ever now. Don Amici will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Wing and the Prayer. And Baxter appears through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Darrell F. Zanuck's Technicolor production, Wilson. Heard in tonight's play were Norman Field, Eddie Marr, Griff Barnett, Leo Cleary, Ferdinand Bounier, Kathy Lewis, Ken Christie, Charles Seal, Franklin Parker, Tyler McVeigh, Ed Emerson, and Herb Litton. Next week at the same time, you can hear Lionel Barrymore in The Mayor of the Town. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John N. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again on Monday, September 4th, when the Lux Radio Theater opens its new fall season. The biggest news in cake making. New Easy Mix Spry Shortening. You get lighter, better tasting cakes that stay fresh longer. And new Spry cuts mixing time two-thirds. No creaming. No long, tiresome beating. At your grocer's in the same handy jar, you Easy Mix Spry. Grand for all baking and frying. By Spry. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.